Well, well, it actually happened, folks. Honda and Aston, they are one. And before you say anything, Honda are actually cool with Alonso that they're over it. So even though Honda and Aston Martin are going to be joining forces in 2026, it may not actually impact the Monaco Grand Prix all that much, but all of the positive news about their future might actually net something quite elusive for pretty much anyone other than Red Bull this season. Somebody else winning. I'm actually going to be putting my neck out and saying Fernando Alonso's best chance at a win is going to be here in Monaco. But I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that later on. By the way, I respond to every single comment, so do comment below your predictions for this race. Not to mention also for the news that Pirelli and their tyre tests for the rest of the season might yield some very beneficial results in terms of actually making the season more exciting. Because it all goes back to a tweet that Formula Data Analysis put out that back in 2013, when the Pirelli tyres kept blowing up, they actually changed the construction and Red Bull went from kind of doing okay to utterly dominating. Teams up and down the grid change performance just because of the tyre configuration. So don't worry folks, there is a chance that this season will be interesting. But let's get back to Monaco. And hopefully that will be interesting because Monaco does have a history for being a little bit processionary. But Alonso, he does have a great history around here. He has won twice. Of course, Max Verstappen is in the form of his life and he could easily add to his tally, but we got some good old vanguards here that could easily throw a little cat amongst the pigeons. The pigeons being Red Bull, of course. Red pigeons? But then again, we've also got to actually be aware of the fact that Checo exists. He has incredible street smarts around here, and he has practically won every single street circuit there has been this season, which has been practically all of them bar Australia. But Maybe you could describe Australia as a semi-street circuit? But either way, Checo's been doing really well. I am also with you in wanting to actually have a conventional circuit. I missed Imola so much. I'm even excited for Catalonia, and that's not an exciting track. Just give us a conventional circuit, FIA, please. Checo is a firm favorite to actually win, and because it's Red Bull, it might actually make sense. And no, he's not going to crash, so that means he secures pole, yada, yada, yada. I don't want to hear any of that. Unless it happens again when, okay, I will eat my own hat. As for Mercedes, I feel they'll actually do well this time out because they're putting on so many upgrades at the same time. I mean, come on, the sheer amount of stuff you're adding to the car is guaranteed to give you at least some kind of improvement. Not everybody improves so quickly at once, and we've got multiple things going on the cars. So it's fair to say that Mercedes will actually have a fair shout at a podium and certainly be up there and actually besting Ferrari, who have actually delayed the majority of their upgrades to Spain because they'll get better data out of it. And that is a fair enough point. Of course, Mercedes really want to get this W14 to be something that it isn't right now. And according to them, it's trash. But I think they're being a little bit harsh. They will be traveling Aston, which means probably it might just be Fernando up at the top and Stroll kind of floundering. He didn't do well last year, as you might be able to remember. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't a good look, Lance. The midfield will be close, but it is actually kind of hard to pick out a firm favorite out of them. According to FData Analysis' list of what was going on in Miami, the vast majority of the midfield is very, very close in terms of performance and drag and efficiency. So it's really kind of hard to say which one will actually stand out other than the fact it'll be down to pure chance, luck, what they ate for breakfast that morning. So here's hoping that Valtteri Bottas actually has a few more espressos that morning. McLaren, uh, here's hoping that their brand new livery, which I actually predicted spot on, by the way, they will actually have a better time of it while they're celebrating the Triple Crown. And here's hoping they'll actually score some points and they'll actually get some recognition because it is my opinion that the 2021 golf livery that they yielded is only really fondly remembered because of the fact that Lando got third place. Had they both crashed out, I don't think it will be as fondly remembered because it's tied to success. Also for the fact that Carlos and Lando had a little bit of banter on the podium and that, that was cute. Williams will also have a special livery, which they will announce on Friday. So do be sure to subscribe when I do a live stream when they actually announce it and show it off and I give my thoughts. But let's tie ourselves back to Aston here and why I think Alonso has a fair shout at actually winning the darn thing. It's mainly down to the fact that Alonso has won the Grand Prix twice before in 2006 and 2000. 
2007. The Aston car has tremendously good downforce and they have been improving their DRS, although it won't be that big of a deal at this track because there's only one DRS zone and it's not very long. And Aston's issue of drag won't be that much of an issue again because there aren't that many straights. So Red Bull is going to be the best car on the grid, but the gap between them and the rest of the grid will be not as big in Aston as well as Alonso's cheekiness and adaptability, especially on the track where things can happen very, very quickly, will be critical here. And not to mention for the fact that Aston will not be going out to try and take risks. Their mentality this season is all to do with just not rocking the boat and making the most of what they actually have. They did not expect to be this good so soon. Their plan is like a year ahead. This is definitely the best chance for a victory. And some of you may be thinking, well, why isn't there a DRS zone in the tunnel? Well, um, it's a tunnel, it's dark. And would you really want a place where you're giving up rear downforce where there is actually a turn and you really can't see all that good? Because we've seen plenty of accidents in the tunnel when you do have a working rear wing. Yeah, we want action, but we don't want that kind of action. Right, let's get to the predictions, shall we? Okay, I already said it, Fernando Alonso, I'm going to be putting a big punt on that he is going to win this race because I just feel his tenacity is going to be up there. He is going to be motivated to try and get Aston their first win ever, even when they were back in F1 in the 50s. This is something that he knows that he can possibly get. People have asked him, do you think the Aston can win? And he's just like, yeah, I think this is the best chance. Very slow tracks where drag and DRS doesn't really come into the equation. But what about the rest of the grid? Well, I'm going to go down to, say, in fourth and fifth, it's going to be Hamilton and Russell. They're going to be better than some of the other teams. And Ferrari, they are actually naturally and organically delaying the upgrades and progress to the next race. So they're sort of going to be treading water here. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if Charles has another incident here. Sorry, Charles fans, but let's be real here. It's kind of like Rubens Barrichello and his Interlagos jinx. It just happens. The pressure of a home race gets to them. George will probably come behind Hamilton, and Hamilton has been really clamoring for an upgrade. So he's going to be extra motivated to perform and show George what he can actually do. So he will have the fire put up under him if the upgrades work. His future will probably be sealed because he won't be going to Ferrari, that whole thing. I really don't think he should move. But then second and third. In third place, I'm going to say it's going to be Max. I feel like Checo's street smarts will actually come to his benefit once more. So Checo will be definitely second. And I feel like he'll be okay with that because Red Bull are so far ahead right now, they don't really need to take any risks because in Monaco, people can crash. And if Perez and Alonso are going to be going at each other's throats and then Max is going to be right there, do they really want to end up maybe taking each other out in a potential flashpoint occurring? We all know it's going to happen between Checo and Verstappen, but do you really want it here where they also have previous history from last year? No, no, I think Red Bull will just go, you know what, let Fernando win this one. But then again, Red Bull do like winning here on their special boat motorhome or motor boat home or boat home. And I think it'll be OK if we miss the jump into the swimming pool for one year because we want to see Fernando maybe doing it or maybe doing something else. Do they even have a tradition for winning? Well, it's been a long time since they did it. Ultimately, why I think Fernando will win is down to the fact that the team is absolutely motivated and they are probably the best functioning team on the grid right now. And if you want to hear about more of my thoughts, go to this video here and you'll find out more.